Whoops. Got it. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the Bridgewater Conservation Commission. It you still is... have two minutes. I'm sorry? You still have two minutes. Oh, I have two minutes. Okay, I'll uh, hold on. Well, welcome anyways. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Bridgewater Conservation Commission. It is July 27th, 2023. Uh, we have a quorum, so we can begin. The time is now six o'clock. Um, for the record, the members and staff present, we have Harry Bailey, member, Sarah Sperber, member, myself, Wendy Smith, chair and the Director of Community and Economic Development, Bob Rooley. I will now read the governor's order for online meetings. <clears throat> Disclosure pursuant to section 20 of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This meeting of the Conservation Commission for the town of Bridgewater will be hybrid and accessible to the public through remote participation to the greatest extent possible. There will be no public attendance permitted. Citizens who wish to tune in to the meeting may do so via Zoom. Um, the virtual link for Zoom is located on the bridgewaterma.org website. Um, and you may access it through that. On the agenda tonight, we have a call to order, um, which we've done. Um, Public comment, public hearings, new business. We have a request for determination of applicability uh, for Wyman Meadows and North Fork Preserve. We have a notice of intent for 350 Cross Street, notice of intent for 2073 South Street, notice of intent for 53 Morris Ave, notice of intent for Zero Lakeshore Center. We have old business, uh, which we don't have any, um, Conservation Commission business. We have administrative items for 30 Stone Hill Lane for an extension request, 1185 Pleasant Street discussion, um, and possibly a vote on a vice chair, but maybe not. And then last but not least, we will have adjournment. So um, first on the agenda, we have the request for determination of applicability. It is for Wyman Meadows and North Fork. Madam Pacific. Chair, you, yeah, you didn't ask for if anyone had public comment on anything that's not. Oh, I am not here. used to having that in here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am supposed to open it. It is still new. Um, we open for public comment. If there's anybody that is in the room um, that has any questions for the Conservation Commission, that would like to ask something or make a statement or comment, um, now is the time that you can do that. You can raise your hand um, physically or you can use the chat. Um, and if you do speak, would you please give your name and address for the record, please? Mr. Rooley will call on you. Madam Chair, there are two uh, participants with their hand up. Mark P had his hand up first. So okay. if you could unmute yourself and identify yourself, name and address for the record, please. Sure, thank you. Thank my, you. Name, uh, my name is Mark Peterson, uh, 43 Church Street. I have two comments. Uh, one, one comment is, um, I'm just wondering if the order of conditions for projects yes. current and previous are accessible on the Bridgewater Mass website. 
And if they aren't, if they can be added there, they're great to look through to get an idea of, of you know, where, where things um, can be changed and uh, fixed and updated and improved. Um, and the ex next comment is, I don't know if you're discussing um, 1185 Pleasant Street um, in this meeting for the fire station. Um, it didn't look like there might be a public comment um, period for that. But so if there is not a public comment period for that, then I'm, my comment is, um, are there any extra, extra protections from um, or for the vernal pool uh, from invasive so, plants? As we said earlier, public comment is limited to items that are not on the agenda. Uh, that is on the agenda okay. uh, as an administrative matter. Uh, there's no decisions being made. There's no applications before the Conservation Commission at this time. Um, so there were two two twofold things. The first thing about the order of conditions, were you asking, Mark, if there was a list on a website that you could look at for order of conditions? If they're just available. So I, I try to search um, you know, via Google or go to the website or Bridgewater Mass at um, the, the site itself. And I search just for the term order of conditions. I can't find anything other can, than, other than previous can... conservation commission meetings. Okay, Bob. So what are you are you looking for guidelines for order conditions or related to a specific application? Every application. Yeah, so we can send you a link to the DEP website. And I mean, that's where they reside. We don't have okay. them on our website, but we can give you a link and you can look it up by the DEP number and then everything associated with that application will be available there. Okay. Um, would you want to, can you put the link in the chat or how do, how do we go about getting him that information? If Mark will put his email in the chat. Uh, I will have Nicole reach out and get it to him. I don't have it okay. readily available to me. I can all. do that. Thank you. Right. I, uh, and Carlton Hunt had his name up as well, hand up as well. Okay. Good evening. Carlton Hunt, 80 Austin Street, Bridgewater. I learned last night that you were going to have the discussion you mentioned about uh, the vernal pool for the future fire station is hoped to be put in. Uh, basically, I will say the agenda is wrong because you need to include that as a discussion. But you can. We don't, Carlton. We don't. I'm, I'm going to finish, sir. Well, no, uh, because you're out of order. You're talking about something that is is on the agenda. Public comment is limited to things that are not on the agenda. So you're talking what? about an item that's on the agenda. I'm going to mute you. Um, I will say as the chairperson and with 1185, we have that listed as administrative items for tonight. We are discussing information regarding what you're inquiring about. It's not ready for any kind of a vote or anything going forward at this point right now. We're just discussing what your concerns are. So when it goes on the agenda, you will see it listed under new business. Okay, so it's just for us to discuss to get information and flagging and all that stuff that we're doing right now in the process. Okay, so thank you, Carlton, and thank you, Mark. Anybody else have any comment or question regarding don't, conservation? Don't see any. Okay. All right. Um, with no other public comment, we'll go into the public hearings. Um, <clears throat> so first up, we have the request for determination of applicability for Wyman Meadows and North Fork Preserve. It's map 39, lot three and seven. The applicant representative is Owen Gray, Wildlands Trust, um, and TOB Open Space. So we do have all the green cards for that, and we have an ad that I will read in to, for the record. Wyman Meadow Legal Notice, Notice of Public Hearing, Conservation Commission, Bridge, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Town of Bridgewater Local Wetland Bylaw, Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on July 27, 2023, held as a virtual meeting over Zoom. A link and instructions to participate in the meeting will follow and be posted to the calendar on the town's website at www.bridgewaterma.org. A recording of the meeting will also be posted to the town's webpage within 48 hours after the meeting ends. 
The hearing is for a request for determination of applicability filed by the Town of Bridgewater Open Space Committee and Wildlands Trust. The applicant proposes a 1.2 mile hiking trail that will traverse through the Town of Bridgewater's Wyman Meadow Conservation Area and Wildland Trust's North Fork Preserve. The trail will have a two to three car parking lot located off of Plymouth Street. The applicants also propose two water crossings constructed for the trail in the form of bog boards and one span bridge. The properties are owned by the Town of Bridgewater and Wildlands Trust and are located at 0 Plymouth Street, TOB Wyman Meadow, and 322 East Street, WLT Norfolk Preserve, Bridgewater, Mass. Map 39, parcel 3. Zero and seven zero. Please contact the Bridgewater Conservation Office at 508-697-0950 for the hearing date and time. All interested persons are encouraged to attend. So with that, um, do we have um, Owen? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Owen. Hi. You want to just say your name and who you are for the record, please? Absolutely. So I am Owen Gray. I'm the stewardship manager at Wildlands Trust out of Plymouth. Thank you. Um, are you able to, I don't know if you need to share your screen, if you want to talk about it. It can be fairly quick. I don't. Uh, absolutely. Do I have. Do you have the share? ability to share your screen. I Great. do. Okay, so you're all seeing this? Yep. Okay, so this is uh, sort of the tr proposed trail map for uh, what we've been working on for uh, probably about the last year and a half, uh, planning out a trail system here. Uh, so we've got uh, an existing parking area uh, down on the Wyman Meadow property. Uh, maybe a uh, few hundred feet up the road uh, from the water department gate. Uh, and this is just a small access road uh, that the water department uses uh, off of Plymouth Street. It's it's a um, fairly small parking area. We wouldn't uh, you know, build anything onto it uh, besides a fence to prevent people from driving onto the property onto the trail um you can see uh the first mark there is um the first water crossing that uh we would like to build on the trail um i can show you down below the colors are different but um it is in a small wetland area so it's uh just standing water um uh, with uh tall, uh, you know, Phragmites cattail. Uh, and if there is a path that goes through it right now, I don't know if it's hunters or just a game trail, uh, but it is getting use. Um, you can actually see a little bit of erosion through that spot. Uh, so putting a bridge there would actually you know, not only prevent people from having to walk through the mud, but uh, prevent that wet spot from growing larger uh, from people traversing through it. Um, then we have, I can show you a photo of this. Yeah, so this is the spot I'm talking about, the first spot. That's the first one, yeah. yeah. I, I, that's the one that uh, I showed you, Wendy, when we were out there. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's the underneath that is the bridge, what it would look like, right? Yes, this is what we would construct there. Very like simple yep. uh, footbridge. Um, and then this is the second spot. Um, you can see here, this is a picture from this summer. Um, I'll show you where that is on the map. So that is, that is the uh, blue asterisk there. Uh, we would uh, instead of the footbridge there, do simple bog boards, which are um, just look like this, um, very basic, uh, allow water to flow underneath them. 
Um, and uh, by that, those are the only two spots that we are aware of that we would need to uh, actually, um, you know, construct water crossings for uh, this trail, which the trail itself is going to be spectacular uh, if it's constructed. So um, it's our hope that we're able to do this. Um, and I'd love to answer any questions you all may have about it. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Owen. Um, Bob, do you have anything that you want to add in? No, I mean, I think that this is a good public purpose. Um, if, in fact, they, you know, we have the town plus a nonprofit. So if we can deal with it through this process and save the expense of having them to spend money on additional engineering for a full NOI application, um, I think this is a more prudent approach. Right. Thank you. Um, and I, Commission members, I went out and saw um, this land. And I mean, it's, I would say, three parking areas. I do have a question, Owen. Are you doing like, I forget what you said. Is it just going to be grassed that it would be cleared? Or is it going to be like the two, three parking areas with like a gravel type of thing put down? What What would you use for the parking? We would keep it grassed to start and uh, okay. see how that holds up. And, okay. you know, if it looks a little hairy, we have a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's nice. And it's a way to get out to the, the, North, the North Fork Preserve that they have to do this trail. So um, Sarah or Harry, do either one of you have any questions that you want to bring up? Yeah, yeah. my question was, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, Harry. <laughs> um, my question was because I know um, in the paperwork it said that you all um, Wildlands Trust will be responsible for upkeep and maintenance. Um, I guess my question is, is like there's no end date for that, correct? Like that is for as long as you guys deem that we want to keep going with that trail. <laughs> Absolutely. We we uh, we we one of the things we love doing at Wildlands is. Uh, caring for trails and this yeah. <laughs> this would be a, a really nice one to have uh in our rounds as you would call them um, yeah <laughs> we have a dedicated crew of trail workers uh, that are out almost every day cutting trails back uh cleaning up parking lots um and and we take good care of this place and yeah. so no, I'll just awesome. add that they have a contiguous property to this site that they're already yeah. maintaining yeah, no, I just wanted to wanted to double check, but I think it's great. I'm excited. It'll be nice to have another trail in, in town. Mm -hmm. Harry, did you have a comment or question? I, I'm just going to make a comment. I've been working with Wildlands Trust with Scott McFadden for over 12 years now. They bought nice. a lot of property along the river, and they do a fantastic job. You don't have to worry, worry about a thing with them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and there is a there is an abutter that lives near the entrance to that who actually on his own for a few years has been mowing. He mows along the um, along the drive that goes out. Um, he goes up to like the fence before you get to the water area that's up back the department. Um, so yeah. It didn't you talk to about something about having possibly somebody um Owen like like a trustee of sorts or something? There was some some word that you used on that. Like, I mean, you will maintain it, but maybe like maybe this guy might be interested in once in a while taking a walk out and about making sure that there's no, you know, nothing's broken down out there, nothing's yeah. crossing a path or whatever. Yeah, so one of the first things we do is uh, when we open a new trail that we're involved in is uh, recruit people to a program called Adopt to Preserve, uh, which is um, essentially a trail monitoring program for volunteers. Um, so they are our eyes on our preserves uh, and trails that we manage. Um, and I, I'm hopeful we'd be able to find a few, not just one, but a few for this property. Okay, thank you. 
Um, anybody in the um, anybody online that has any questions? Yes, for... there are two. Uh, the first is Eileen Haney. Okay, Eileen, uh, state your name and address, please, for the record. Eileen Haney, three one six South Street, and I'm chair of the Open Space Commission. I just wanted to um, just give us a little a little bit of a hand here because this is a really positive um, effort and project that we've been working on with open with um, the Open Space Committee and Wildlands Trust because open, uh, Wildlands Trust did not have any access to this property. It's a beautiful piece of property, but they had no way to let people out there. Out there, And so by combining with the town, we're going to be able to use the town land to get access to theirs. And the other thing I just wanted to mention is um, this was one of the town properties that had been neglected over the years. So there really, there'd been some very rough hiking trails about 20 years ago that were really hard to find now and so i this is all also now on um um jack hart not jack hart I'm, who, jack who's the the parkland steward the parkland steward coordinator the halftime person he's very interested now in getting out and working on the the town part of the property as well the 35 acres and seeing if we can expand the trails so this has the potential to, to expand well beyond even what Owen showed on the Wildlands Trust property. It should be a really good combination project and a really good public-private partnership, I think. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm just giving us a pat on the back. So <laughs> thank you, Eileen. And, and Mark. Mark P has his hand up, and there is also an, one more additional participant. Yeah. Thank you. I was Mark Peterson, 43 Church Street. Uh, someone mentioned that there was a Phragmites um, uh, invasive plants on the property. I'm just wondering if there's any be any measures taken to either eradicate the Phragmites or prevent the public from stepping on the Phragmites seeds and dragging them all over town. Um, so just that's my comment. Thank you. Owen, can you answer that? Or As of now, we don't have uh, a plan besides uh, to make sure people aren't stepping on it. We'll make sure that the trail is wide enough. Uh, we don't want to create a road through it, but uh, wide enough so that the Phragmites won't be, you know, getting on the bottom of people's shoes, anything like that. Um, as for, you know, determined moving forward, uh, we're always looking for options. Uh, we try to manage invasive species as best we can on our own properties, but um, it has proven to be a challenge and very expensive, um, but there will, I'm sure we will have conversations about it moving forward. Okay, thank you. Does that answer, Mark? Okay, thank you. And Melissa so, has her hand up. Hi, good evening, Melissa Ramondetta, Lakeside Drive. I just wanted to voice my support of this project and uh, Thank Eileen and Owen, uh, Open Space, Wildlands Trust, and the town for opening up some additional open space for residents to enjoy. So thanks for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, you. Melissa. Okay, so if we have no other comments or questions, um, do we have a motion to close? Motion to close the hearing. Thank you. And a second? Second. Thank you. And a roll call vote, Harry? Aye. Sarah? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Um, and now do we have um, a motion to issue maybe a negative determination? So if, okay. if that was the intent of the commission, then the motion would be uh, that a uh, Pause. Determination of a, a negative determination so the project can move forward. Mm -hmm. Harry, what were you going to say? Motion for a negative determination. Okay. Do you have the address in front of you? No. Okay. It, it's it is map 39, lot three and seven. Thank you. And do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Sarah. And a roll call vote. Harry Bailey? Aye. Sarah Sperber? Aye. Myself, Wendy Smith? Aye. All right, we are all set with that. Owen, thank you so much for the work that you're doing and open space. Great, thank you all very much. You're welcome. Bye. 
Okay, next up on a new business, we have a notice of intent for 350 Cross Street, uh, map 118, lot 23, 24, 89. Uh, the applicant representative is Robert Vaza, um, Silva Engineering Associates. Um, we had all green cards and this is the public hearing notice. Public hearing notice, Conservation Commission, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Town of Bridgewater Local Bylaw, the Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, July, well, it says 20th, 27th, 2023 at 6 p.m. for review of a notice of intent filed by Robert Vaza. The public hearing will be held as a virtual meeting over Zoom. A link and instructions to participate in the meeting will follow and be posted to the calendar on the town's website at www.bridgewaterma.org. The property is identified as Assessors Map 118, Lots 23, 241. Um, I'm believing that that one shouldn't be there. I believe it's supposed to be 24 and 89 for 350 Cross Street. All interested persons are encouraged to attend. Um, before we go any further, um, if Mr. Vaza is on or somebody from Silver Engineering, we do not have a DEP number. And I'm just wondering if someone online does have that. So if I may speak. Um... Yes. Well, I'm trying to find the ad. Do we send you the ad right from the Brockton Enterprise or was it a Word document? Um, I I have, I think Nicole printed this for me yesterday as she copied it as a Word. Okay, so that is not the legal ad that was posted in the newspaper. Oh, that's I have, interesting. I, I mean, have, she copied and pasted from... Yeah, no. The legal ad did say Thursday, July 27th, 2023 at 6 o'clock for review. Okay. Uh, that's for Claremont. Hang on. Let me look for the other one. I went back and forth with them. I want to make sure it's the right one. Notice of intent for Vaza. Yeah, I had the newspaper correct the articles. I have it here if you want to for your records. It's not Maybe you can send it over to. I will. But it did say July 27th, 2023 at six o'clock okay. um, for the lot, map 118, lots 23. Oh, they did that wrong. Yeah, 24. 24. Yeah. Yeah, 24. And 89. Okay, so the DEP. Um, Rebecca, if you would just identify yourself for the record. Oh, yeah. Yes, Sorry. yes. Rebecca from Silver Engineering here on behalf of representing Mr. Vaza and his uh, intent to relocate his driveway. Let me put it on the screen here. Um, we'll start and then we'll go on with why DEP didn't give us a number yet. Because I didn't do all the paperwork. All right, you have in front of you the notice of intent plan. We were here a year ago, maybe, to get the riverfront and the wetland line for the whole property mm -hmm. uh, approved. So we have an ANRAD for the, the riverfront and, the, and the, the, the wetland line that's right here and all the buffers. Uh, we're here to try to relocate the driveway to uh, better suit the, the future of Cross Street and to improve the drainage and to work a little bit better with the potential that the property may have for all 20 plus acres. So DEP didn't give us a, a DEP number yet because I did paperwork for 310 CMR 1058-4, which is general provisions for work in a riverfront, but I did not give them the compliance document for 10.585, which is redevelopment in the riverfront. So I mm -hmm. am working through the the paperwork to document that we are in a previously disturbed riverfront. Um, as you may or may not know, this is the old section of Cross Street. It's actually, there's remnants of pavement in here. This is where the water line is. This is mm. old Cross Street before they relocated it. And his property has, you can see it on, on uh, I went out there, you could see the asphalt. It's still kind of remnant in there. Mm. Um, so we are in a previously um, disturbed riverfront and we're just trying to make a, a few improvements to the driveway uh, for all the improvements that Cross Street is supposed to be bringing forth, you know, all the work they're trying to do. Unfortunately, uh, I had a family issues that prevented me from finishing some of these um, documentations and I will get it to us before the next meeting, but I thought the commission may want to tell me their thoughts, their impressions, if they want to, I don't know. 
talk about it? Okay, so um, um, I don't know. So this is the plan. We can look at it. You're showing us what's yep. what on here, and then yep. we can we would probably maybe continue it. Is that what you're thinking? Well, I, you can't close it because there's no DEP now. Right. Yes, right. I would, I would like your thoughts. Your if there's any concerns, address them before the next hearing. Get this documentation so the DEP is satisfied. Um, this is the existing drive here, and so we would just straighten it so it has a, a more um, perpendicular approach to Cross Street. Uh, we would put a culvert under the driveway to allow surface water to flow underneath. Uh, during construction, we would have our erosion control in place. Um, Again, this is where the water line is. So it's, they would, um, I don't know, it was kind of already, it's kind of thrown in now, but you can still make out the roadbed. So the culverts, uh, the gray Probably. boxes. So if, if that's, if that's to allow water to, isn't the water more to the right of those? Am I reading it wrong? So, I'm going to bring the driveway up enough to get the culvert under. So we have a 45 elevation and then I have a 46. So I'm going to, I'm going to lower it enough to get the water underneath. It doesn't go anywhere right now. And where is the flow of the water? Where does it? It goes it's towards not... this, this, the, um, the, the depression right here. Yeah. Okay. This, okay. this section of the, the, of Snow's Brook has two, um, Culverts. This is a 48 inch under cross street, and then it opens up a little bit, and then it goes back underneath this. Um, what would that be? Rock. The previous rock. one that was there. Yeah, the old one. It's it's kind of neat when I was out there. Huh. Um, but yeah. Um, so this is the second part of the crossing where the old cross street used to be. Okay, I would kind of like to go out and see it. Um, I mean, if we have to wait a week, maybe. We could do a site visit and get out there to it. I don't know what other commission members, anybody. Um, Harry, do you have any questions, thoughts? No, I know I know that area. Okay. Um, Sarah? Um, no, no thoughts right now. I mean, as always, would love to make them out, but make out, get out, excuse me, to Make it out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. That's the words I wanted, but uh, I doubt it. But I will. I will trust your eyes, Wendy. <laughs> um, Bob, thoughts? I don't have anything. I mean, as you know, we've said we can't take any action on it without the DP number. Yep. If you want to, you know, go out individually to look at it. That would probably be the most efficient. Yep. Okay. Um, and we can continue it to the next meeting. Okay. All right. So, I mean, I guess that's it. I'm going to try to get out there. Maybe somebody else would be able to meet me and we could take a walk out. Um, other than that, we'll just, we can have more discussion uh, next week. So we want to continue it till next week, Rebecca. I mean, I know we're going to take a vote, but. Next meeting. not Next, next meeting, week. not next week. Correct. Not next week. I'll never have anything done by next week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the next meeting for who's ever making the motion is for um, 810. Motion to continue. Anybody? Um, I will make a motion to continue to August 10th. Mm -hmm. At 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock. Thank you. Harry, you want to second, second it? Excellent. And a roll call vote. Sarah Sperber? Aye. Harry Bailey? Aye. Myself, Wendy Smith, aye. All right, so we'll retake a look at that next meeting, Rebecca. I can be available if anybody needs um, to walk it. And okay. What not. All right. I will, um, I'll get in touch with you. I'm making a note. Hold on. Um, okay, so next on the agenda, we have a notice of intent <clears throat> for 2073 South Street. Uh, map 125, lot 13. Um, applicant representative is Anthony Furtado and Michael Koska. The DEP number is 116-1527. Um, we do have all abutters notified. And the legal notice of public hearing, Conservation Commission, Bridgewater, Massachusetts, for 2073 South Street, Bridgewater, Mass. 
In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 in the Town of Bridgewater Local Wetland Bylaw, the Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on July 27, 2023, held as a virtual meeting over Zoom. A link and instructions to participate in the meeting will follow and be posted to the calendar on the town's website at www.bridgewaterma.org. A recording of the meeting will also be posted on the town's webpage within 48 hours after the meeting ends. The hearing is for a notice of intent filed by Anthony Furtado. The applicant proposes um, a portable well and grading within a 100 foot buffer zone associated with the construction of a single unit dwelling located outside the buffer zone. Applicant also seeks approval of the limit of BVW and the top of bank associated with Snowsbrook. The property is owned by Anthony Furtado and is located at 2073 South Street, Bridgewater, Mass. Map 125, parcel 13. Please contact the Bridgewater Conservation Office at 508-697-0950 for the hearing date and time. All interested persons are encouraged to attend. So with that, um, do we have Anthony Furtado and Michael Costa on for... It appears Mr. Furtado is here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Furtado, do you want to speak? Uh, sure. My name is uh, Michael Koska. I'm a registered engineer and land surveyor in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts here representing Anthony Furtado in uh, finishing the development of a lot adjacent to his home at 2081 um, South Street. And uh, these were retreat lots that were done through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, this application came before a prior commission. And since then, um, or under the application, the, uh, the roadway or the driveway, the utilities um, all have been built. And so we're here before the commission to try to finish that job of building the single family dwelling, uh, a subsurface disposal system, garage, associated grading, and uh, a well that is in the rear of the property being 150 feet from the septic system and upgrading from it. Um, we had Mr. Ken Thompson come in from um, uh, Five Wetlands, and he re-delineated the flags that were naturally missing from about 2015. Um, he delineated the bank full area, which is shown on the top of the sheet. I did locate more flags, but I ran out of space on this plan, uh, so it was readable. But in going through the lot was BF2 to BF13. From BF13, it uh, proceeded in basically a northerly direction away from the property. Um, the two areas that are uh, affected by that uh, bankful line are uh, number one, the 100 foot inner riparian zone and the 200 foot outer riparian zone. We have a table where it's total riverfront area in the inner, right, inner riverfront area, um, Inner riparian zone, I'm sorry, inner riparian zone is 24,863 square feet that goes through this particular lot known as 13-6. Uh, uh, the outer riparian zone has a uh, square footage of 25,083 square feet. The total riverfront area, therefore, with the addition of those two numbers is 49,956 square feet. We are not proposing any alteration within the riverfront area from the flags that are out there. So there's zero square feet there. In addition to that, Mr. Thompson flagged uh, the BVW line that was associated with the uh, Snows Brook uh, bank full area. And it is shown on my plan here uh, from flag A1, that would be the easterly property line proceeding in a westerly direction to flag number A18. Um, that line there mimicked the one that was done in 2015. Associated with that, the, the town of Bridgewater's uh, wetland bylaw has a 25 foot no to 
touch buffer slash activity zone. Um, that is shown on the plan with staying uh, and respecting that zone. Um, and then there is the 100 foot buffer zone, which we uh, do have some partial grading that just sweeps in through the backside of the proposed garage and the proposed dwelling. Um, Mr. Kafka, I'm sorry, is there any way you can, can you share this? Because I don't know if everybody, do, can, are you able to do that? The, the plan, no. The, Too complicated? It's the same plan. <laughs> Does anyone have it on the board? It was same. Yeah, board. it was sent to the board. Uh, seven copies, I thought, were brought there, and uh, I, I think most of us. I have it in front of me, but oh, I don't good. know about Harry or Sarah. They may have looked at it online, right. but sometimes it's hard to be on this meeting and look at the plan at the same yeah. time. Yeah. I was just curious. I'm sorry, okay. I didn't prepare for that. Uh, That's okay. Um, but the hundred foot buffer zone is from that BVW line in the rear is uh, encompassing the, um, the grading. It is uh, just to the back. There's a little uh, stone wall that we would like to utilize to uh, bring the grade into the pot, uh, portion of the deck. There would be lawn in the backyard and the closest activity would be the proposed well being 150 feet uh, town of Bridgewater Board of Health uh, regs uh, from the septic system. There is another wetland line that Mr. Thompson flagged and it is shown as flag F2 through F7. And then the, uh, those were right in front. Those are right to the south of the lot adjacent to Stern Event Pond. It doesn't affect what construction activities we're doing, but the 100 foot buffer zone does get into that common driveway that you know has already been constructed. Um, we would either put up a silt fence or wattles or both or whatever the commission decided in, in order of conditions. The work that was done for the crossing um, was under file number uh, SE 116-1357. That's a Scribner's error on my part on 1446. That is the wrong um, file number. Um, I'd like to bring that to the board's attention. And um, from this, and I would like to turn it over to Mr. Thompson so that he could um, talk about the resource areas that he um, flagged recently so that we could uh, reestablish this file and uh, hopefully complete our project soon. Good evening. My name is Ken Thompson. I'm the botanist for the project. I want to get into what. Mr. Jean... Thompson, your address, please. Ah, 134 Spring Street. Thank Rock. you. All righty. Well, the last couple of days have been kind of fun. Um, DP had a question on the filing of the riverfront through the pond area versus riverfront from the inlet. So we had a meeting, the Madam Chair and I and Whitney McLeish from DP had a meeting this morning. We're throwing oranges into the pond. I'm going to bring, can I share this, uh, uh, some pictures, please? You can go ahead. Okay. All right. This is our morning meeting spot. There's two outlets to the pond here. It's a stone wall going around along here. I guess it was a, a mill site at one point. And we were standing here. This is the higher flow of the two area out, outfalls. We placed one orange here and we threw one orange out there. This one eventually made it down to a point where it hit bladed grass or buried and stopped. And this one just floated away with wind. So Whitney McLeese came back this afternoon and said, the pond is a river. I mean, I've got lily pads. This is all pickerel weed. The stream comes in here and flows this in this direction. And that's the other end of the pond looking at it. So Whitney's saying that it's a river because it has laminar flow. Well, we were sitting 15 feet from the overflow and the water's high. I kind of question the, the methodology here because we threw a, a, an orange here and the light winds of this morning just kind of pushed it over here. 
So I'm kind of questioning the fact that she wants to call it um, uh, a, a river. I mean, it's rivers defined in the regulations as a, a pond is 10,000 square feet in size. This pond is eight and a half acres in size. And they say in the riverfront portion of it, if it doesn't have a name on the USGS, you have to prove that it doesn't have laminar flow. So by putting an orange 15 feet from an outflow during high water, she's trying to call it a river. But we put it out in the middle of the pond and the wind blows it away, away from us. So the question is, what part of the law is the most important? Is it the definition of pond or is it the definition of riverfront? So until that goes to court, neither one of us are gonna know that. What she told, I called her this afternoon to say that I disagree with her. She says you have a job uh, a file number. It's up to the commission to decide what they want. So in proof that we've been calling it a pond, through the last development, it was a pond. Have I cleared my screen? Yep. Yes. Your assessor's map calls it a pond. Your open space, um, your open space plan calls it a pond. Supposedly, it freezes in the winter and people skate on it. So it's really up to the commission to decide if they wanted to call it a pond or a river. Because the only way this is going to be cleared up is in a court of law. Hmm. Now, Wendy, you and I were there this morning. That orange that floated to the opening. That was 15 feet from the opening. Hit a blade of grass and stopped. So it's just a pond raising up. I call it a pond because it's just, it's dammed. If it was low flow conditions, there wouldn't be nothing going over the edge of that pond. And I'm sure somebody in this town has witnessed that. Right now we're high water. I've got wetlands holding water that shouldn't be holding the water in July. So my opinion is not, it's not a, it's not a river, it's a pond. Whitney's going on the technical description in the riverfront area, but yet the state defines a pond. It's going to take a court filing to figure that point out because the law is not talking the same language right now. Thanks, Ken. So, so it's up to the commission. Now, I did talk to Wendy, uh, Whitney this afternoon, telling her, you know, I respectfully disagree. And she told me it's up to the commission. You have a file number. It's up to you to decide what's a pawn and what's not a pawn. I mean, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, so a couple of things. One, I grew up in Bridgewater. My friend lived right off of South Street. Before you get to Sturviant Pond, we always called it a pond. Um, so I never would have guessed that it would be labeled a river. Um, I find it interesting what Whitney had sent out regarding riverine characteristics and, you know, it, it, it's what this is. And if it's not listed, then maybe it is part of the river. Um, however, they were allowed when planning happened and this development went in these, these pieces of land and, you know, were all set up and there's a driveway that goes in there. Not the driveway's already there and the proposed, things are on the back side of that driveway they're not in the I don't I don't know what the distance is from the bank to the drive do you know Ken 117 feet to the top of the road I believe 117 yeah so I mean you know I don't know I guess because there's other dwellings there's two other dwellings right isn't that this one's going in between the two that are there absolutely and the land's been cleared utilities have been brought in there's a phone pole in the front yard to bring electricity in they got to provide a septic system and a well I mean this was cleared it should have been developed back when the original development went in the parcel's been sold to somebody else to develop and I mean it's, it's there's nothing there <laughs> yep. Yep. you know it was disturbed it's you know weeds right now there's right. A, a third of an acre no two-thirds of an acre in weeds okay. right there right so i have thunder going on and a train going by um 
what uh, commission members? Madam Chair. Harry, Harry, what's that? Madam called? Chair. Yeah. Can I, I make a suggestion? I don't, I'm not disputing by any means what Mr. Thompson's conversation with DEP was this afternoon. Um, you know, if DEP is, is saying it's a river, then saying it's up to us, then that doesn't seem fair. I mean, I would suggest that at least you and I or have a conversation with Whitney just to understand what her position is. I mean, she rolled the grenade into the room on this. So, I mean, if we, I would be more comfortable if we had a little bit more clarification as to, you know, that she's punting on this and saying, I'm citing these regulations, but it's up to you. I mean, yep. that doesn't seem fair. And we also have two commission members that are not on tonight that may have some feedback. I, mean, I think you can, you know, hear members' comments if members of the public have a comment, but I think in the responsible thing would be to continue this until we've had a chance to talk with, with Whitney. Okay. May I add one thing? Sure. I, would, I was going to postpone this meeting tonight to go down and have a meeting with DEP. I requested a meeting with Whitney and her, her subordinates, and she told me to open the meeting. It's up to you guys, but yep. please, please call Whitney. Okay. She's sitting right. on the riverfront portion of the act because it didn't have a name on a topographic map, but yet the town's been calling it a pond. It calls it out in the open space. Yep. It's, you know, it's one of those things, right? I don't know how to argue. Right. I got gotcha. you. There's no definitive um, answer here. What's that? There's no definitive answer, but I used to work for a marine company. I can put uh, flow minis in there. And we'll find out if it's got laminar flow. They make these little ones with propellers. So mm -hmm. I know a hydrographer, an internationally responsible hydrographer. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, Commission members, does anybody have any comments or questions that you want to add? I'll add uh, the town calls it a pond. This house has already been built at, and it was called a pond. We work for the town. It's a pond. That's well, my opinion. Yeah, I'll just say that we can't use assessor's map for any kind of legal description. I mean, that's if there's a disclaimer. So whatever it's called on the assessor's map is irrelevant. I mean, if there's other documents in town that call it out as a pond, but the assessor's map is not a legal document for legal descriptions. Well, if it's a river, then it affects the two houses that are already built. Yeah, no, I'm not arguing with you, Harry. I just, you know, I just think that it's a little unfair that, you know, Whitney is punting on this and you know, there seems to be a pretty big void in terms of what her position is versus what, what Ken is saying. And I'm not by any means disagreeing with Ken. Um, I just think for the board's sake, just getting clarification from Whitney would be the prudent thing to do. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Harry. Sarah, anything? Yeah, I mean, uh, Bob kind of already beat me to it. I think it's unfair that DEP just put this on us um, when she drops that bomb and then says, but you decide. But I don't disagree, and the town of Bridgewater has been called upon, but I'm not comfortable voting either way on this without better clarification. Yep. Okay. Well, then, uh, anybody that's online? Madam, Madam Chair? Uh, go ahead, Michael. No, it's uh, Ken here. Okay. Well, Michael oh. has his hand up, too, Ken. Oh, so all right. Too. All right. Go ahead, Michael. Um, in the legal description, which should hold some weight, and I'm sure that if I check the deeds going up Snow's Pond, if there's anybody that abuts, not uh, Snow's Pond, Snow's Brook, Snow's that it would mention, you know, by a, you know, stream or river node as Snow's Brook. In the deed description here, it talks about by the pond. So even in the legal description from going, you know, probably back to the, when they flooded this area, they probably have a mill on it. Um, it was known as a pond. So yeah, again, Michael, I don't think we're, I, I, I don't think we're arguing that point. No, I, just, I, I know you're not. I'm just you know, adding it. As, yeah, no, I as think, you know, again, the commission just needs to cover on this. To, you know, for, you know, to add to what our position is, that's yep. all. Yep. Ken? Mr. Thompson, did you have something else? 
No, I was going to say, let's get the deed out. Because if it was a river, it would go to the center of the river. If it's a pond, they're going to put it right on the edge. And I think maybe all of us should go have a meeting with DEP. There's all of this. Because their law is the one that's kind of not working. I, I'll reach out to Whitney tomorrow to see if we can set up a Zoom meeting. Uh, that's, that's probably going to be the most expeditious way to have a conversation about this. And then I'll circle back with folks in terms of availability for early next week. In the meantime, I would say, you know, can, if, if the public has anything to say, certainly have the opportunity now, but to, to continue this to the August 10th meeting. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Is there anybody in the public that needs to make a comment or has a question? You can raise your hand or use the raise your hand icon. Not seeing any, Madam Chair. Thank you. Not seeing any. Um, do we have a motion? Motion to continue to August 10th. Thank you. And a second? Second. Thank you. Um, roll call, Harry Bailey. Aye. Cyrus Berber. Aye. And myself, Wendy Smith. Aye. So folks will discuss it at the next meeting two weeks from tonight. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for your time this evening, evening Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Next up, um, we have a notice of intent for 53 Morris Ave. It's map 22, lot 15. The applicant representative is A American Investments, LLC, Silva Engineering Associates, PC. Um, we do have all green cards for Butters and the legal ad. 53 Morris Ave, Bridgewater, legal notice. Notice of Public Hearing, Conservation Commission, Bridgewater, Massachusetts, in according with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Town of Bridgewater Local Wetland Bylaw, the Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, July 27, 2023, held as a virtual meeting over Zoom. A link and instructions to participate in the meeting will follow and be posted to the calendar on the town's website at www.bridgewatermaa.org. The hearing is for a notice of intent filed by A American Investments LLC. The applicant proposes construction of a single family house with associated grading within a buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands. The property is owned by A American Investments LLC and is located at 53 Morris Ave, Bridgewater, Mass. Map 22, parcel 15. Please contact the Bridgewater Conservation Office at 508-697-0950 for the hearing date and time. All interested persons are encouraged to attend. So with that, um, do we have the applicant representative, um, anyone from A American Investments or Silva Engineering that would like to speak on 53 Morris Ave? Rebecca from Silva Engineering. Hello, And his wish to put it on the screen here, to reconstruct an existing dwelling. All right, here we are. So we're down on Morris Ave. We're on the right side of Morris Ave. There's an existing dwelling, number 53. It's kind of in rough shape. Uh, so we went to zoning board because we're undersized and we're under everything. We're under frontage, we're under setbacks. And the zoning board um, granted us the right to rebuild uh, without any further zoning violation, you know, we were 24-1 from the street, we're 30 from the rear. We're just outside the 100 foot. We could have done an RDA, but it felt prudent just to have you guys look at it and make sure that we're all okay with what we're trying to do here. The existing garage is going to remain. Um, we're going to have our erosion control along the back of the property. The wetland is actually off property, so uh, we had Ken flag it in February 2022. And we're just looking to put a single family house out here. Uh, that's really it. So if you had any questions on the thought, let me know. Um, I have two questions. The existing garage, what would that be used for? Because it is inside in between the 25 and 50. And then is that whole area in the back, is it going to be grass? Well, it's existing, it's existing grass now. Okay. It's kind of existing scrubby. And probably it's probably just the foundation that's there that's usable right now. If anything, it would be to re, re rebuild on the existing foundation so that we're not disturbing into the area. We would just leave it 
Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what the use would be except to just support the use. Maybe it's just going to be a glorified shed for, you know, mowers and, and whatnot. Right. But rather than rip out the concrete, it was just to leave it in place. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Rebecca, is that garage on the abutters property encroaching onto this piece? There is some legality of ownership at the moment, in which case this is why we came for this one lot. The, the the deed wasn't written very well and the transfer of ownership didn't transfer. This is actually supposed to be owned by the same people and it didn't happen that way. So while the applicant is trying to figure out ownership of this back piece, we're just going to build the house as proposed and as shown. But is that rear piece then landlocked? It doesn't have access to... It was supposed to be transferred with the ownership of this. So once okay. they figure out the title and, and clear up the title, it will probably come back to planning board as an 81X to combine the two. Thank you. Um, Harry, do you have any questions? Oh, they're taking a house down and putting another one back in the same spot. Okay. Um, Sarah, anything? Um. Yeah, my one question was just the driveway. I think I just missed it while you were zooming around. Zooming yes, around. Yes. <laughs> yes, all right. Um, we do have town water and town sewer as per the existing dwelling, so we're just going to reconnect overhead electric. Ah, okay, there and it is. Right a tiny there. little driveway right there with a garage. All right, sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> but, okay. Um, is there anyone in the public um, that's on that has any questions, concerns? I do not see any hands. Okay. Um, having no more questions, do we have, is there a motion to close the hearing? I mean, do we have enough information and are we ready to close? Motion to close the hearing. Thank you. Sarah, second? Second. Thank you. A roll call vote, Harry? Aye. Sarah? Aye. And myself, Wendy, aye. And then do we have a motion to issue? I'll make a motion to issue. Um, and do we need any, are there any conditions or anything? I don't, Bob, do you have any? Um, well, I mean, I, I think Rebecca addressed it. I mean, there's, there seems to be some title issues with respect to that rear parcel, but I don't know that that's impacting the ability to approve the notice of intent for the reconstruction of the house as presented. Okay. All right. So, sorry, Harry, do you want to redo that? It's just so I can go clear. <laughs> Motion to approve 53 Morris Ave. Thank you. Map 22, lot 15. Um, and do we have a second? Second. Thank you. And a roll call vote. Harry Bailey? Aye. Sarah Sperber? Aye. And myself, Wendy Smith? Aye. All right. Um, Rebecca, you're all set with that one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then last up under new business, we have a notice of intent for Zero Lakeshore Center, map 83, lot 85. Applicant representative is Claremont Lakeshore Bridgewater LLC, Silver Engineering Associates, PC. Um, Rebecca, do you want to explain? Oh, you're on you're mute, here. Rebecca. Thank you. Um, the applicant wishes that we open the hearing and then continue to the next available meeting. Uh, on behalf of Claremont Lakeshore Bridgewater LLC and Silver Engineering, we would like to continue the notice of intent hearing on the agenda for Zero Lakeshore Center Map 83 Lot 85, scheduled for Thursday. Please let us know. If, let me know if I can provide any additional information. Okay. Um. So I think we'll just. Open a motion it. to I continue. Yeah, and, and continue it. So do we have a motion to continue? Motion to continue to August 10th. Thank you. Sarah, second? Second. Second. Thank you. And roll call vote. Um, Harry? Aye. Sarah? Aye. 
and myself, Wendy, aye. So Zero Lake Show Center is also continued to 810. We are going to be busy at the next meeting. <laughs> all right, thank you all for the new business. Um, we have no old business, but under Conservation Commission business, we have administrative items. 30 Stonehill Lane um, is an extension request. And Bob, I don't, do you have something about that? I, I don't. I mean, there's, you know, again, I think we had this problem the last time. There was no one here from. I will represent Stonehill. Okay. Um, I was given the same letter that you probably received, June 7th, to continue lot three. We did the subdivision for Stonehill Lane, and um, they actually have the COVID extension that gives them a little bit more time. So I guess we're just looking to make sure that the expiration would be November 6, 2023. I'm trying to make sense of this letter. Let me throw it on the screen so we can all read it together. Hmm. Um, this is Driscoll? Uh, yes. Um, okay. Okay. And I know... Personally, I've only had to do one of these COVID polling. So you get 462 days added on to whatever permit you had if the permit was valid as of March 10th, 2020. And so that's what this letter is trying to explain. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that okay. they're entitled to the okay, good. extension. I wasn't sure what I was here to help with. So, yeah, so I mean, there's no question they're entitled to the extension. I think this was discussed previously. Uh, if the commission wishes... They can grant the extension with the condition there'll be no further extensions. Yes, or one year, two year, or three years. It doesn't have to be all three years. I believe they intend to break or to move forward soon. I mean, this is the market for it. Um, they just weren't ready, ready yet. I mean, they are requesting a three year extension. Oh, yeah. Okay. I do see that. Three years and then no further extensions. Yeah, I mean, we can, reasonable. last time we didn't have anybody on. So, I mean, you're speaking up for them now, but yeah. we didn't have that the last time and, and nobody well, explained it. Nobody was there, so. That's okay. I think this is the last house on that subdivision too. So mm -hmm. it would be prudent to develop it while, uh, you know, market's going here. Yeah. yeah. Anybody in the commission have any questions? No. Okay. Sarah? No. No. Okay. Uh, public? Anybody have any questions? Oh, no, we don't have to do that because that's not what this is, correct? Right. So we do have to do a vote, though, yes? Or yes, yep, it, with the condition. To not, not extend. There'll be no further extensions. No further extensions. Okay, so does somebody want to make that motion? I'll make um, that motion the way it was explained. So the motion, Harry, would be to grant the extension as requested for a period of three years with no further extensions thereafter. That's the motion I'll make. <laughs> and a second. <laughs> Excellent. Roll call vote. Harry Bailey. Aye. Sarah Spurra. Aye. And myself, Wendy Smith. Aye. All Harry right. Bailey was doing his best. Rich Little there, uh, using <laughs> other people's voices. Yep. Okay. So that's all set. Granted extension with no further extensions. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, 1185 Pleasant Street discussion. Hello. Hi. Eric, do you want me to summarize where we're at or do you want to do it? Uh, Bob, I'm glad to let you go ahead and I'll, I'll jump in. Okay, so uh, this is the third or fourth time that this has been uh, before the Conservation Commission. Uh, Mr. Dias is working on behalf of the town as uh, in terms of the site design for the uh, anticipated new fire headquarters. Uh, he's shared with the uh, commission that there is the need to cross a wetland. Uh, the area to cross the wetland with the least disturbance also is proximity to a vernal pool. Uh, he's provided documentation with respect to our bylaws and with, you know, in terms of what's a vernal pool, whether or not it, it's jurisdiction. But I just want to say that this is not an NOI. This is just so they have some comfort going forward with the design. Any final decisions with respect to uh, the design would come as part of an NOI. 
Um, as Mr. Diasich shared previously, if they are to move away from the vernal pool, then they are moving into an area that's going to create greater disturbance to the wetlands to the west. Um, did I capture that, Mr. Dias? 100% correct. Uh, additionally, uh, there is a request that uh, to keep this moving and we're behind schedule on this project, uh, he would like to do some test pits on the property to the rear and the uplands area, um, but they would be accessing that from the abutters property to the east who has granted uh, permission to use their property to get onto this so they're not crossing the wetlands. Did I get that correct, Mr. Dice? Also correct. You're good at this. <laughs> some, will, some will disagree. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I know Harry got out there, Marilyn got out there, Eileen got out there, and I got out there. So we've seen the flagging for the vernal pool. Um, I guess, um, do you know the entryway that they would be going in from Pleasant Street? Do you know if it is, there's a curb cut, and then there's an area farther down heading toward whatever street that is with the lights at it right that's right there if you were heading street. say that again um, elm, elm, street. elm street yeah if you were heading up towards elm street there's a there's a flag that's pretty close to the street do you know whereabouts they would be going in i do um if it's okay let me share my screen real quick sure. yeah. right, last time we talked about this i was in the truck so you had me at a disadvantage oh yeah that's right today i'm actually here so i can Maybe be a little bit more productive. All right, where are we? Here we go. All right, so this is the current concept plan. Um, the the current curb cut is actually located about right here where my cursor is. In fact, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it. The, I, it's not showing on this plan, but it, it's generally around right here. We're actually moving to the, I guess you would, let's just call it page east a little bit more than where that curb cut is because that puts us closer to the most narrow point of the BBW, which is the best for us to cross. Okay. So, so where is the vernal pool? Is that it, that green that's right there? This green circle in this hundred, this red dashed line that you see is what would be the 100 foot vernal pool buffer. Um, as you know, the state says that there's a 100 foot vernal pool buffer that extends to the edge of the BBW if it's interior to a BBW. Mm -hmm. um, and then the local puts additional restrictions on it if it holds a certain volume of water. And we provided the calculation that shows that this doesn't. I think that that might be an error. I'm not sure about that holding a certain amount of water. A vernal pool is a vernal pool. I know I read it in the bylaws, and I think that that might be an error because that's land subject to flooding will hold a quarter acre of um, water. If a vernal pool has been diagnosed a vernal pool, it doesn't have to hold any specific amount. That's. Oh, you froze. Everybody froze. Madam Chair, are you there? Too, because when we went in, and Harry, you can say if I'm wrong, but for some reason, it I feel like we walked in more to where the flags for the vernal pool are. Like that's when is he, right yeah. along the edge of Reese or whatever that the what? solid line on the right. Wendy, you might have to yes. repeat because you froze, <laughs> so we lost you about halfway through. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. That vernal pool doesn't seem to be where we walked into. I okay. feel we walked in farther to the vernal pool. So I, I don't know that. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I did not conduct either the wetland delineation or the survey on this property. Uh, they were, those two disciplines were contracted separately by the town. 
I'm glad to follow up with them, though, and make sure that, that this information that we have on the plan is accurate. Uh, the last thing I would want to do is design this whole site and find out that it's not. Right. The other thing that I may have frozen, did you hear me say about the quarter acre of water? Um, yes, I, we heard that. <laughs> we did hear that. And, and I understand, it, and perhaps that is a mistake in the bylaw. Um, I would pause it, however, even if there was a hundred foot vernal pool buffer under the bylaw, and that is a mistake, I would still make the argument that this is the appropriate place to cross. And I would seek a waiver from that requirement in this case, mm -hmm. which obviously, you know, we would have to, as Bob said, wouldn't be valid until we submit a notice of intent. Um, and I think all we're looking for in this case is some level of comfort that the commission doesn't think we're crazy. Um, and we can probably move forward with this plan and, you know, prove that this works and then the commission can make a can make a decision. You're not endorsing the plan. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the town through its agents is taking some risk moving forward with the design prior to went on a lie. But I think there the, the intent is to, as Eric just articulated, to at least acknowledge that this is the least disturbance that can be done to the wet, to the wetland. And if in fact he needs a, a waiver with respect to the vernal pool that they're prepared to do that, um, he will obviously as part of this, make sure that what's been done previously by others is accurate because uh, he's gonna need that to be accurate for his plan. But I think you know we are just looking to be able to keep some forward momentum on the design. Okay. Harry, you took a walk in with Marilyn when you walked in to see the vernal pool. Am I coming in okay? Yep. Okay, because I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> um, didn't you feel like you walked more in? <clears throat> okay. First, I want to thank Marilyn for coordinating so that everybody could go out there. Her and I were the uh, pathfinders. Yep. We tried going in, going in from the street, and it's a uh, ten foot drop. So we changed our mind. We we parked towards Elm Street. So we went up to the about property, and we parked in there. We went in. We found some flags. Marilyn started going up. I went down, and then we both went down to all the way down so we could see the street. It was quite a walk down. We only went in, I'm gonna say maybe 7,500 feet. That's all we went in. Yeah, well, I'm just looking at that green circle that is a vernal pool, the, the green in that red circle. Yeah. And that, to me, that's not where we walked. If that dark line on the right-hand side of this is the edge of Reese, whatever the name of that landscape place is, whatever. Um, I feel like we walked in farther. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, and you may or may not have, and you know, I think as Eric said that. Well, if it was in the middle of the proposed fire facility that's in gray and the vernal pool that we walked into was in the middle where that gold dotted dashed line is, that's a big difference between it being where I'm thinking that it is and where it's located on this map. Yeah, I mean, I think that when I've seen it, I mean, you know, basically this vernal pool is parallel to the surface parking on the Reese's property to the southwest, uh, because most of the water that drains into the Vernal Pool is stormwater runoff from that parking lot. Um, we may need to meet. We yeah, again, I mean, and, and this is not, this is just, you know, for Eric to continue to design, um, working out, I mean, if, because of these, if, if the consensus is we're more concerned with the vernal pool than disruption of the larger wetland area, then I think that's what we need to hear and he'll make an adjustment accordingly. Um, you know, there's gonna be, 
some disturbance to the wetland, trying to minimize what that is, identifying the exact location of the vernal pool to be determined, or this might be accurate, but um, we keep going. I mean, we've, for five weeks now, we've been going back and forth on this. And, you know, and I respect the uh, patience of the commission, but we also you know, have a schedule and to get this project complete as well. So, and again, this is, there's no decisions being made. This is just solely so they can come back with a complete NOI application. Right. Well, if that's where the vernal pool is, then, you know, I, I mean, I guess I would be okay with the less disturbance. Okay. That would be uh, my thought, Sarah, Harry. Again, I have a big if, I have a big if, though, okay. if that's where it is. So I have not seen it. I will just say that obviously I trust that Eric and whoever's making these plans will determine that the vernal pool is actually where it's supposed to be <laughs> and that we will have minimum disturbance. At this point, that's all I can say. It's just hope that you guys make the most accurate plan and hopefully we get to vote on it. Absolutely. No, I, I think that's, that's very fair. Oops, sorry. Audio is shaking. Your, your audio is like the sound playground. system at Woodstock. There we go. There's playground. your audio. You're going to have to repeat what you said, Harry. Because it, it, it looks to me like you're trying to put the fire station in and then later on, go, well, there's no land. You can't get into it. Uh, were you talking Higher about statement, Harry? We didn't hear the beginning part of that, Harry. I think he mentioned the playground, but yeah. we don't need. To, okay, we don't need my to... my computer my computer just came back on. Um, what I wanted to say is the land was left for a playground. You put in the the horse before the cart or something. I want to make sure that the playground gets in there. The playground is going to go to the rear of the, the north portion of the property. Um, so you're, you're going to have correct. There was a covenant that required that there be uh, some public purpose. And in the uplands area to the rear of the fire station is where the playground would go. OK, thank you. Which which way are they going to get in? They're going to use the same road as the fire department. Yes, that is correct. You're going to have you're going to have soccer moms bringing their kids on the oh, same is that road. Parking for it. Sorry, Harry. Yeah, you're going to have the fire trucks and soccer moms and everything going on on the same road, and there's a fire alarm and them trucks come roaring out. You're going to do that with Bridgewater residents. I'm going to stay out of that discussion. Yeah, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, no, I work. I work with the public at the transfer station. I know what they do. Well, well, uh, it, it, to, to Harry's point, and it's a well taken point. Um, part of what we're going to certainly be required to do on this is a complete traffic study, and that will um, that will include not only the road network around the project, but it will include flow through the project um, for both emergency vehicles and um, uh, residents and, and, and people using the playground and the passive recreation area. So that is something that we can certainly take a hard look at. Hopefully the traffic team has some great suggestions for us um, and we can we can incorporate to the greatest extent that we can ways to keep things safe. And I'll just add that anecdotally that before I left Rhode Island, I had gotten funding for a new fire headquarters. And a lot of the funding now is coming for these, that these facilities can be multi-use. They can be used for COVID testing. They could be used for uh, vaccinations. So the idea that the public is going to commingle with the public service is not unheard of. Um, you know, this, these aren't soccer fields, it's playground. But um, I think Harry's point is well taken and, and Eric's going to acknowledge it. But uh, 
making a fire headquarters more than just a fire headquarters is what the new norm is in terms of public safety buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, so if I may, Madam Chair, you know, on that subject, what I'm hearing is provided that the vernal pool is in the right place as shown on this plan, um, we feel like we're generally on the right track by minimizing disturbance. Um, I will say you've got me nervous now. So the first thing I'm gonna do in the morning is reach out to the surveyor and the wetland scientists and confirm that everything here is on the up and up. Because I agree with you, if that vernal pool is not shown in the correct location, it's going to change things further. And I we can't have that at this point. Yeah, okay. sounds good. Okay. Sounds um, good. And then on the second matter, if I may, of the test pits that we need to conduct out there, um, that you know we are going to access the site through the Reese property. It's actually the Bridgewater Tree Farm back here, and we're going to come in on the upland side. We will be doing some test pits, likely in buffer areas um, between. I would say certainly out of the twenty-five, um, we're going to have to get as close as we can to the culvert so we can get soil conditions there to support the structural design, but we can stay out of the 25. Um, and you know these things are allowed under the Wetlands Protection Act without filing, provided that A, you don't cross a wetland, and B, you minimize disturbances to the greatest extent practicable. Um, the local bylaw doesn't necessarily make the same exemption, but we are hoping that this commission will follow the guidelines given in the Wetlands Protection Act at this case, and provide us with that that sort of an exemption from filing for just the soil testing. I you've got to test the soil to see if it's going to be able to do what it needs to. Yep. Right. It, I, mean, I, rather guys, I rather you guys do it all one time and do it correctly mm -hmm. than going in and out of there. <laughs> so. I'm I'm okay with it. Great, great, and to be you know a hundred percent you know transparent, at this point it's the crux of our design. Um, so we don't move forward without that information. So the sooner we get it, the better. And I intend to be out there next week. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Awesome. Good. Great. Thanks, Eric. Both it. Thank you all for your time and, and we'll your work. We'll be hearing from you soon, I'm sure. Absolutely. We will get something for you soon. Bob, thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Thank Bye. you, Eric. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yep. Um, the last thing we have under administration is the vice chair vote. And I think, do we postpone that? We'll talk I, about it. We, in as we much as the we, person that wants Maryland, to be in this. Marilyn's not even here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm supposed Let's to be babysitting that. of all nights. For our meeting to go an hour and a half, I told my my son, I, my meetings never last that long, 45 minutes. I should be able to be there by quarter of seven. He's waiting to go out to eat, him and his wife, with friends. So I'm ready to have somebody make that motion so we can stop this. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second? Second. Terrific. We're all set. Meeting is adjourned. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.